it's time for some real education. Odd Nerdrum is considered one of the greatest living figurative painters. Primarily influences by painters Rembrandt and Caravaggio helped place his work in direct conflict with the abstraction and conceptual art considered acceptable in much of Norway and Sweden today. Nerdrum creates six to eight paintings a year, and he says that his art should be understood as kitsch rather than art as such. So this guy is different than most of the art installation nonsense that we've seen. We've looked over the last couple of weeks at some of these artists. Last week we did a story on Bad Dog, a great big 28-foot uh, uh, Labrador retriever peeing on the side of a museum in Orange County. That's kitsch, right? That's what kitsch is. It's, it's not really art. It's a parody of art. It's uh, an ex a appropriation of art. In a way, Sabo, the great uh, conservative uh, rock contour out in California, is very much a kitsch kitsch artist, right? He's, he's turning the artistic tropes against the establishment. And that has political usefulness, but it's, to what degree you can call it art is highly debatable. But the thing about Odd Nerdrum is, is that he actually does have some talent. Take a look at some of his pictures here. Uh, what you're getting here is, kid, I'm not even sure I would call this particular image kitsch. Uh, it's a particular, uh, the painting is pretty haunting. The techniques are really kind of interesting. There's a kind of gauzy uh, uh, quality, the sfumato. Uh, quality that you see in the paintings of da Vinci, which may be partially what's happening here. Kind of an unveiled Mona Lisa. The blood on the lips highly suggestive, suggestive of any another, of any, all sorts of possibilities. And what I'm trying to get at here, for a kitsch artist, a uh, guy's got some talent. I mean, this is not just somebody who's blowing up 40-foot 40 40 inflatable dog poos like happened in, 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 in outside European museums about 10 years ago. This takes some effort and some, and some artistic vision. Take a look at the next picture. Same thing here. This is very much in the tradition, I think, of da Vinci and possibly Michelangelo. Uh, is this uh, a Mona Lisa? who is brought her child to the table. Now, there's a certain intensity of the stare that is, I think, per calculated to undercut that en enigmatic smile that you get from Mona Lisa herself with terror, uh, the, the look on the child's face. This is right out of, this, it takes a lot of talent. It is not easy to paint E tropes even like this for in Da Vinci and ways. And yet, uh, it's hard sometimes to even see how, you, I could see how you might call this kitsch, uh, particularly looking at the face of the child. But there's more going on here that this is a real artist who is using his arti artistic technique. In the teaser, the opening, Katie mentioned that Rembrandt also had this gauzy, gauzy look in his painting. Rembrandt always worked and also worked in these colors. These browns, these grays, these golds were just major figures, major paint uh, c combinations in his palette. And you see it here too. It takes a lot of talent to be able to mimic those paintings at a high level, even if you're twisting them towards kitsch. So when we think about Odd Nerdrum, he's even got one of those names. He's got one of those names, Odd Nerdrum that you would think would be a perfect gnome de plume for some kind of a uh, gutter skype, some, some guy running around and just giving the middle finger to the art establishment. But he's a lot more complicated than that. His paintings in themselves, uh, which are inspired again by Rembrandt, by Da Vinci, by Caravaggio, there's some really wonderful paintings that he has in his kitsch collection, that, that, that thunderstroke of darkness and out of which light emerges that you get in some of Nerdrum's paintings are worthy of serious stuff study on their own, regardless of what the kitsch factor is. Uh, uh, Nerdrum was born in Sweden in 1944, but lived almost his adult life. He considers himself to be an, uh, an, a, a Norwegian now. He's considered one of the greatest living figurative painters. Themes and style in his work reference anecdote and narrative. Primary influences by the painters Rembrandt and Caravaggio helped to place his work in direct conflict in the abstract art of the modern era. Kitsch painting, as he calls it, is an international movement that made up, is made up of classical painters. So you've got some serious painters here. A direct result of a 24 September 1998 speech given by Naad Nerdrum, which was later clarified in his book on Kitsch with John Ove Tuve and others. So it's a serious movement that makes serious political statements, but starts with classical artistic tropes and themes. Give me that any day. Give me a real artist who is choosing to twist art in real ways than what you get in mostly modern American art, where you get political actors, uh, one trick pony social justice warriors pretending to be artists to make trite political points.